Let's go on to the next company, ATS Corporation. ATS on the TSX trades at 44.33, $4.38 billion market cap. What do they do? Industry leading automation solutions provider with global capabilities in custom automation, repeat automation, automation products, and value added services, including pre automation, after sales services. So, ATS, they service customers across the globe, essentially, in the life sciences chemical, consumer product, electronics, food, beverage, transportation, energy, and oil and gas sectors. So this company made an acquisition on Friday. And they announced that they had signed a definitive agreement to acquire Avidity Science LLC for about $195 million US, $265 million Canadian. Avidity is a growing designer and manufacturer of automated critical water purification systems, components, and consumables used in biomedical and life sciences applications. Uh, for the last fiscal year, Avidity generated about $81.9 million in term U.S., and its compound annual growth rate over the last couple of years has been about 10.4%. Their adjusted EBITDA was 20.4%. Uh, the margin was uh, that versus the ATS's core business's margin profile right now is about the mid-teens. So this acquisition should help margins over time. The I mean, it's smaller for the business, but will, it, it's accretive to margins over time. The price tag was $195 million, representing 11.2 times Avidity's projected calendar adjusted EBITDA. So let's this year's EBITDA. Now let's look at the business of um, ATS specifically. Their last quarter, where were we in terms of revenue growth? That's Q1 fiscal 2024. Revenues came in up 23% to 753.6 million. Net income was 47.7 million compared to 39.4 million. So good growth there. Basic earnings per share 50 cents up from 43. Adjusted 69 up from 57. The backlog is about just over two billion. That's up thirty percent year over year. The order backlog growth is primarily di driven by higher bookings, uh, and those bookings are coming in the transportation market, primarily EV projects, which is interesting. But order bookings, however, um, were lower year over year, about six by six point three percent. Now valuations, trailing PE is around forty one point nine. Forward 21.3. Uh, if you look two years forward, you're starting to get around the 20 times PE ratio. Uh, ATS is a good business overall with a strong long term growth profile. Revenues have grown uh, back from 20, 2014 when they were 683 million up to 2.7 billion over the past 12 months. Gross profit has increased smartly over that period as well. Given this growth, the company deserves a premium multiple. Currently trades at around 40 times, which is high, but forward is looking closer to the 22 range. There is a threat that growth slows significantly uh, organically in a recession or downturn. And while we, we note that backlog was up 30% year over year, bookings were down 6%, which may indicate a slowdown is coming. Following the acquisition, pro forma leverage is about 2.5 times expected adjusted EBITDA up from two times uh, at the start of this year, or at the end of last year. Management's target leverage ratio is between two to three times. So they have some flexibility, but not a great deal. We do think the company is starting to push closer to its upper limit. Um, while the acquisition environment may become more attractive, there is less flexibility here without uh, an equity raise near term to add to growth. Good long-term business, and we may look closer at it on pullbacks because the long-term track record for growth has been good. Probably in this range, it trades near closely to fair value. And that's all I got on ATS. I remember writing my report on ATS, again, a monitor report for clients, just as we were highlighting the company uh, back in, I think, July of 2022, and, you know, what did I say in my report at that time? Uh, the company is looking to expand, you know, into vehicle battery manufacturing equipment as well as, you know, pharmaceuticals equipment because of, you know, the growth as well as, you know, potential higher margin. So it is nice to see that, you know, they are continuing to uh, uh, add on the pharmaceutical side and the backlog 
uh, is large uh, with a lot of bookings for, you know, EV battery manufacturing and whatnot. So it, it is interesting. But, you know, like I said, in the conclusion in 2022, you know, um, given its high debt leverage and, you know, price evaluation will continue to monitor it. So, you know, again, like you said, it does demand uh, a premium to some degree because of, you know, the business's growth uh, over time. But, you know, they're they're up there in leverage now. Um, so, I mean, yeah, we'll continue to monitor. Them. Yeah. And, and, uh, on that note of interest expense, interest expense in 2022 was about 32 million. I think I have here and, uh, 64 million in 2022. So doubled so interest a big expense. Chunk of earnings that takes. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's just something that we have to be aware with, with uh, a company with any type of floating or adjustable rate, um, uh, debt, it, it, the, the interest right there, you can see significant, a doubling in interest in a year. Um, yep. And, you know, they've added to the debt of this company. So higher interest expense. It's not, you know, it's generating good cash flow, so it can service that. But I mean, if, if you saw rates continue to increase or even if they, you know, stay at these levels, it's certainly eating into profitability. So when these companies quote adjusted profitability, you know, you, you've got to understand that interest is is removed. And it is a real expense, so yeah, you know, we got to account for that. So it's it's something to account for in these businesses when you're valuing them. Yep. 